Welcome back. You know the old saying, all politics are local. Well, that certainly applies to the state level as well, because there is an all-out effort on both sides of the aisle to win some state-level races across the country. Let's bring my guest tonight. He's Andrew Romeo. He's the comms director for the Republican State Leadership Committee, up late with me on The Final Five. Andrew, thanks for joining me tonight. Good to see you. Thank you so much for having me, Jim. Good to be with you. Now let's talk about what we're seeing right now on the state level, because, you know, it seems up for a lot of people. Um, these are not the quote unquote sexy races. You know, when you look at uh, whether it's the, the role offices like Secretary of State or Treasurer, or even state legislatures or state court races. But, but there is a, a fundamental difference here why people should be engaged in this process. Well, that, that's exactly right. A lot of people uh, get so tied up in what's going on at the national level that they don't pay much attention to what's going on in state government. And well, these races are incredibly, incredibly important for every state's economy. And, and just to put, put a good point on it, Republican states or that are controlled by Republicans with their legislatures, they're leading. Eight, eight out of the top 10 states for unemployment have Republican legislatures. That's because of the policies that they're passing in the states that are important to their constituents. And that's why these races are so important. And we're going to work to elect as many Republicans as possible. When you look at uh, the, the population, too, because there has been, I mean, granted, we have a, had a once in a lifetime pandemic to go through here that, that forced people to move from point A to point B. But in many cases, they're staying in those places. And when you look at uh, who has lost representation in the Congress based on the census, uh, states like California, New York and Illinois, and then you see Florida, Texas and North Carolina doing quite well right now. And that brings us to, to unemployment numbers because we are seeing unemployment down across the board across the country, but you are seeing uh, a market uh, difference when you go from state to state here. Yeah, that's exactly right. Democrat states, six out of 10 of the worst states for unemployment are Democrat states. Eight out of the 10 best are Republican states. And that, that goes back to a difference in policy. Republicans are doing the exact opposite of what Joe Biden is doing. They're cutting taxes. They're being more business friendly uh, versus Democrats are following the Biden playbook and raising taxes during a recession. That's why uh, voters are leaving those states in droves and moving to Republican states you know, where their cost of living is, is much less high. Uh, when you talk about the idea of cost of living as well, it, it's it's fascinating to see when you look at, at what industries are prevalent in which states. Because you look at look at quote unquote blue states, you know California, for example, where you have like you have Silicon Valley and you have these 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 high tech industries. But but granted, the cost of living is so prohibitively high uh, in places like that. You know, is there is there a plan? I mean, in places where you do see high cost of living, how do you sell people on the idea that, that if, if you would vote for Republican candidates, would that address that problem? Well, that's our entire message this cycle is if you don't like what's going on in Washington with, with Joe Biden, uh, recklessly spending and raising taxes and, and making your co cost of living higher, then you need to vote for Republicans in the states to hold the line against those failed policies, right? Republicans, when they're in power, they cut taxes, their economies are strong, their cost of living is lower um, versus their Democrat counterparts who continue to hike taxes and, and, and make things less affordable. So we believe there's a clear contrast going into November at the state level with the difference between Republican and, and Democrat policies. And that's why I feel like we're going to win. You mentioned uh, President Biden a, a couple of times here, and clearly in some places he is deeply unpopular. We know that. Uh, nationwide, his, his uh, uh, approval ratings have been, have been low. They've ticked up just a little slightly here at this point here. But when you look at the messaging, what I'm hearing from, from Republicans, we're going to sell it on the economy. And we know that in the midterm year, pocketbook issues are, are, are top of mind for a lot of people. Uh, in some states, like, for example, Michigan, where there are several uh, several races on the ballot here on the statewide level, you do have some some candidates, Christina Karama, who's a secretary of state candidate. She has been not so much talking about the economy, but talking about relitigating the 2020 election. Uh, does that take away from the messaging a little bit when you when you when there's a focus on what happened as opposed to what you want to build going into 2022 and 2024? Yeah, well, at the RSLC, you know, we believe the election, you know, is, a, is about the future and is about uh, what's going on in the economy and is about how to best push back on Joe Biden. So that's what we've been talking about here. That's what we found in our polling is, is the most effective message with voters. So uh, that's what we're going to stay focused on all the way through through November. Uh, when you look just state uh, across the nation, are there any states, for example, that you believe are, are a good example of what you what you want to duplicate, the success that you want to see. We talked about those states that are seeing the big growth, but are, are there races that excite you at the RSLC right now that you think could uh, could be a, could mark a sea change? 
Yeah, sure. I mean, uh, the important thing to, is to understand the dynamics going into the cycle. Republicans have historically done very well in state legislative races, um, but you know, we we kind of have have hit a climax. So uh, our goal this year is to you know net positive uh, chamber pickups for the for the first time since the 2013 2014 cycle. So if we hold every single chamber because we won in Virginia last year, yeah. uh, we'll be able to do that, and that'll be a historic accomplishment. But also with Joe Biden being you know his approval number being as, as down as they are, that presents a good opportunity for state Republicans around the country, even in bluer states, states like you know Nevada, like Colorado, like Minnesota. There's some opportunities to go on offense there. And, and you know we're certainly going to press the attack and try to win there as well. Well, I'll tell you one thing the Democrats learned the hard way is that when you, when you take your eye off the ball, when you take your eye off the state races, which they certainly did uh, during the Obama years, um, with, you know, the Republicans saw the opportunities, and that's why you've seen a sizable movement in, in in favor of of republicans in states across the country right now andrew romo got a uh, romeo excuse me gotta leave it at that uh, thanks for joining me i appreciate the insight tonight thanks so much this is great and the final five is back right after this